Hey everybody, welcome to another edition. Welcome to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, uh, please subscribe. I am, uh, well, there's gonna be some upcoming things, I believe, uh, with the channel, including maybe a possible name change. I don't know yet, <clears throat> but I wanted to test out this GoPro. I just bought a GoPro Hero 8. I'm gonna see how this goes. Um, so the first video I'm gonna do with it is talking to you about my Ferris FW15 Hydro walk behind. Um, really like this mower. As I believe you guys knew in my last video, I did a live stream that I moved uh, to a new house. And of course I don't have as much property here. And I wanted to start doing a lawn care myself again because I kind of really enjoyed doing that kind of stuff. And I know everybody's going to say, well, Jesus, why did you go with a Ferris? Um, why didn't you get something just, you know, because I got almost 0 0.30 acres of property here. So I got a 32 inch cut on this Ferris. And I wanted something that had pneumatic tires and casters. Um, this actually comes in two variants from the factory. You can get uh, straight wheels, or they call them twheels, actually, because they've got these right here. They're not, they're solid plastic. Um, they actually come from the factory in two options. You either get the casters with the twheels, or you get the straight locked-in ones all the time with the twheels. I did not want the locked-in ones because, I mean, what's the point of having this mower? if you're gonna get locked in wheels. I, I don't understand why they would even offer that option. And we've got our helper here today. Um, so he's making an appearance as well. And uh, so anyways, I when I bought this mower, I said, I don't want the ones that are locked in straight all the time. I want to be able to have that option. And down here, you can actually do that. If you pull this pin and you place it, I think it's, you place it in another area here. Oh no, what it is is you, you pull the pin, you pull this up, so you lock it in place. You can actually lock it straight. Um, these wheels are backwards, so if you go like this, you pull the pin, put down, uh, push this down, and then put the pin back in then you can lock them straight. So why not have both options? Uh, the cost was not any different than, you know, doing that. So I wanted something that was gonna last because I'm sure this house, you know, we won't be here um, past 10 years. I really want a place where I can have some acreage, uh, eventually get a zero turn, mower to mow you know some acreage property but that's in the future so i always try to look at the future and you know there's some places even with you know two three acres you need to get in with a smaller mower this is ideal um however it's not really ideal for a homeowner because of the price tag it's not cheap this is not a cheap mower but what i really like about it is construction the durability uh, the Honda motor is very good. Pull one start, starts right up. Uh, this is the most complex, simple mower on the market. Uh, and the reason I say the most complex, simple mower on the market is because it's got a hydrostatic transmission, but then it has no electronics like it other than, you know, your, your normal pull start motor electronics, you know, spark plugs and stuff like that. Um, but what I really like about it is the simplicity, but the durability, and I really like the hydrostatic transmission. Now, I believe that this being a walk behind in a 32 inch variant is actually, um, the first of its kind to have a hydrostatic transmission. And it is a true hydrostatic transmission. Um, now, you know, again, I'm just working with this GoPro, so forgive me if the angles aren't very good. Um, I'm gonna try to do the best I can uh, on this. Uh, so I'm, I'm still learning this. But uh, a lot of people call these gears, they're actually not gears, this is a governor. Um, 
So you can, you know, if you set it to one, you can only push the bar in so much and it'll only go as fast forward or reverse. I don't know if it affects the reverse gear actually. Uh, it may not affect it in reverse. I'm not sure, I haven't really paid attention to it. Um, you know, so you can set it one, two, three, or four. Four is crazy. It will go fast. This thing will blaze. Uh, so I have it set at three. That's a perfect medium. Uh, two is just too slow. Um, but, you know, it's all, all dependent on preference. Uh, you know, so basically what I do is I mow it and I just push it with my hand like this. And sometimes I'll use these uh, to go in reverse or... You know, literally, when you have the, the blades on, you're pushing it down like this, and then, you know, you're resting your hands like this. Um, yeah, it's also got a blade safety, a PTO safety on here. You gotta lift up before you can actually engage the blades. See, it won't engage without lifting this up. Um, it's got a 10.2 horsepower Honda motor, which is kind of funny because Ferris is owned by Briggs & Stratton. And I would think they would put their flagship Briggs & Stratton motor on there, but apparently, I don't know why they use a Honda. I, I haven't really researched into it. I don't understand it. Uh, apparently it was the best choice for this particular configuration. The uh, deck is not a floating deck, it's a fixed deck. Um, I really like this mower, really like it a lot. The adjustability is really easy. You just pull the pin and put it to your desired location. I have it stuck at three because that's three inches. Uh, I did measure it. I actually measured both blades with a measuring tape from uh, where it sits and it was actually at three inches. So it's three inches. I believe four is three and a half inches, five, and so on and so forth. There's a guy out there that has one of these. He has a lawn care business, but um, you know, he actually went through and actually marked all the spots of what their equality was to inches, uh, you know, according to the number. So with that being said, um, I bought this mower because I wanted reliability. You can go to Home Depot, you can buy mowers all day long there. 200 there, 200 there, and throw them out in a year, year and a half. Especially if you even hit anything with it. Uh, you know, out, outside my house, I've got concrete curbs, I got weird uh, property lines where driveways come in, and if you, if you even hit something with, you know, like a Home Depot special, um, you're gonna have an issue. And I wanted something that did a wide cut. Now Home Depot and all these other ones, they have Cub Cadets. They have a stamped steel deck, which is not very reliable, very thin steel. Stamped steel is not very reliable. Um, I wanted an engineered deck, and uh, this is exactly what this is. The cut is beautiful. Um, it's got timed blades on it, so you don't get that little strip of grass between the blades because they're interference blades so they'll actually cut that path as it's going but it's it has a timing belt on there so it keeps the blades in time um i usually don't like these shoots but this one was engineered pretty good for this mower i mean it's kind of open in this area as you can see um but in the front it's shielded so it actually works pretty well. It distributes the grass, uh, doesn't leave a little trail, uh, unless you're really cutting some heavy grass. But you know, just take the steel blower and shh, shh, that's what I got over there. Uh, just take that. Shh, shh, shh. But the other interesting thing is, this is not practical for a homeowner. It really isn't um, because of the price. But, you know, I was looking at the Cub Cadets. They were like $1,800. Um, I said, well, go big, go home, right? So I got the 0% interest financing on this. And I said, well, I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And I really like this mower. 
The only gripes, I, I really like how it cuts. I really like how it handles. It's very easy to handle. Anybody can use this mower, anyone. Um, it doesn't take a lot of effort to drive it. Uh, you just kind of got to get used to the way the controls work. Um, you know, with, with this bar going backwards, sometimes I forget and I'm, you know, pulling it backwards to go forwards, you know, cause I, I've just got a lot of stuff on mine and <laughs> I've ran myself into the mailbox before. <coughs> um, what was I going to say? Okay. So what I don't like about the mower is it doesn't stripe very well. Um, I would think a mower in this category being for the professional, it would stripe better than it does. It does not stripe very well. Um, does not leap deep lines. I really like the stripe. You know, I really like the stripe a lot. Um, I think it looks better. It looks more rich. Uh, when you get done with the, the lawn, this one does not really stripe. Um, it leaves a little bit of a stripe. And they do not have an aftermarket or a factory striping kit for this. I've been looking all over. So if you guys know of a, a striping kit that I could use on the FW15, uh, pop it down in the comments there. And uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, I know uh, the guy that I was mentioning earlier, he built his own striping kit with him. He brought it out a little bit further behind the wheels on the edge here and used angle iron and a you know like an old mud flap from a car uh to um assemble his own striping kit i don't know if i like that idea or not um i don't know i might just do the same thing but just use an eighth uh inch rubber that usually you find behind mowers not quite sure yet i don't know what i'm gonna do with that but eventually I'm gonna do something I don't I haven't had a lot of time this year to really screw around with it but uh, that's that's one of the downfalls I do not like about this mower and I'm very disappointed um, because we spend this kind of money and it's in the pro line you know professional really it's professionals that are buying these lawnmowers not not home, hairy homeowners okay uh, this I'm probably the only person out there that uses this for a home mower uh, on 0.3 acres so uh, the only other gripe that I have about it is see how they use this hopefully you guys are seeing this um, see how they put the padding there which is is nice but it's it's kind of stiff you know it should be more um, it should be softer I, I think because you're constantly putting your palm on there and the vibrations are transferring when you're when you're um, mowing with this mower the vibrations are constantly coming up and they're really really hard on the palm of the hand another thing I don't like is when you're you know you've got your hand over here and you've got this back like this um, it's really hard on your hands it's extremely hard on your hands so, I mean, I, I got to give it to people that are using these as everyday, you know, money-making mowers that that really would hurt your hand. Um, I'm sure I could come through here and put some padding on here, which I'm probably actually going to do. Um, because, I mean, if you look, we got a little bit of a gap here that I could actually do that and still maintain the... Uh, you know the proper use of the uh, PTO but other than that I mean it's a really nice mower I think this is a one of a kind in its own class I, I really do and it doesn't it does a fantastic cut I just wish it would stripe and um, you know I'm sure this is a this is a newer mower for Ferris I'm sure that they'll probably work on accessories at some point in time um, so I'm looking really looking forward to that um, I think that they really should do something about the bar here, maybe make it a little softer. So people that are in the trade, um, aren't tearing their hands up all day. Uh, but you know, maybe, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Um, you know, it doesn't, 
like I said, this more gets used once a week uh, for 0.3 acres. So this thing will last forever. It's not, it's, I'm not doing this for, you know, a business. Um, so people are going to say, whoa, geez, why did you do the overkill? Well, because overkill is fun. If you don't do overkill every once in a while in your life, you're not having any freaking fun. So, um, yeah, I really like the mower though. It's, uh, it's been uh, one heck of a, uh, adventure with it. I'll tell you that. And the maintenance is super easy too. So if you need to sharpen your blades, you pull it, whoops, pull it up to the eight right there. So you get it real high like that. And you just pull it up like this. And now you can access your blades. And there is the uh, hydrostatic right there. It's really super simple. And every once in a while, probably every third blade sharpening, you probably want to grease, do the grease fittings there. Um, but other than that, I mean, the deck is pretty nice. It stays pretty clean. I did a little scraping on it. Um, I usually put a little WD-40 in there after I get done scraping it. And then you just come pick it back up like this. And then put, you know, of course, bring it back down to the adjustment you use most of the time. And you're good to go. It's very simple. The only thing is, um, <laughs> another thing I was looking at, when I go to do an oil change, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this. Um, anybody out there that has an FW15 that does their own maintenance, any lawn care pros, um, curious to see how you do the oil change. I probably won't do oil change as frequently as you guys would, but um, I don't know if you guys have uh, added something there so it makes it easier to change the oil, I don't know. But that'll be an in interesting thing. I haven't really looked at the manual yet. So I don't know if it mentions anything about changing oil and, you know, letting it drain from there. But so, all right, everybody. Well, I just wanted to do a, a test with the GoPro. We'll see where the channel goes. Um, like I said, this is not an everyday thing. There's some people out there that do this stuff every day. And I'm not that interesting. So, uh I look forward. I appreciate subscribers. I mean, we're up to 3,000 subscribers. Uh, I'd like to grow the channel a little bit more. Um, thinking about maybe doing some other channels as well, some sub channels um, on different topics. Really don't know yet. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, yeah, so for another episode uh, to add to the video library. Hopefully this came out good. We'll see. All right. See you guys for now.